Hello everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to talk about how I use uh, the fast Fourier transform to get the fundamental frequency of any monophonic signal and transform it into a square wave synthesizer in juice and with the help of the FFT class in the DSP namespace of juice specifically. But first of all let me demonstrate the effect. First of all, I will demonstrate it on my vocals. So, so these, these are, are my vocals in general. general. By, By the, the way, way this, this is, is of course, course not, not my, my own plugin. plugin. Now, now we, we will add, add the effect. effect. Um, yeah, yeah, right. right. <laughs> this is that if we combine this with autotune we could make it a, r a really nice um, <coughs> synthesizer now I don't own a copy of autotune yet so I just use Carowear for to demonstrate the effect so now we have uh, the vocals tuned to some scale and then send it to the plug-in which is on this group track and then out to the analyzer of course so now we hear the effect uh, with a square wave that is uh, actually tuned to some scale but still modulated by my voice <laughs> I think this is pretty useful because you could compose stuff with that and just sing it to uh, kind of make the melody. You don't have to play a keyboard anymore and even if you don't sing very accurately you could just melodyne it afterwards and then run it through the plugin. So this is kind of if I mm, work on this project a bit could become a pretty cool synthesizer even though it's actually an effect plugin. I wouldn't call it an, a vocoder because you can't hear the, ver the words anymore. However, this is how it sounds on a synthesizer. I will play you the synthesizer first and also s show you the patch. You see it's just a saw wave with an LFO on the volume and a bit of filtering and it sounds without the effect it sounds like this now let's turn it on So yeah, as you can see and hear, it sounds very similar in volume and in frequency as the original wave and it also reacts nicely to the rhythm, uh, not just so that it uh, has the right volume at the right time in general, but also that the fades are nice and that there don't appear any clicks because some fades are too fast or too slow. Um, there's a little bit of math behind that, but it's not too complicated or else I wouldn't have been able to come up with that. However, let's just dive into the code and I hope that I can explain it fine. So first of all, how did I even start? Um, my start was that I just did the tutorial on the fast Fourier transform in juice. And if you keep on watching this video, I highly recommend that you pause the video at this point 
and just do this tutorial yourself so you know what I'm talking about uh, in the following time. But you could also just skip doing that because I know for certain that most people who watch tutorials definitely won't just pause the video to watch another video uh, no matter what the tutorial person says. It's just a little recommendation because it was also pretty fun. However, then I took the stuff, my knowledge that from that tutorial and made my own class out of that. And this class is not for the visuals, it's just for the um, getting the right frequency and stuff. So first of all it has the constructor which takes in an order and the order is basically for the size of the FFT, the FFT size. The order of it basically means uh, how many bins are there and 10 means that it's two, um, what's the name for that in English? You know when, I, when I'm writing let us do the calculation. This mean it means to um, power two of ten thingy. However, this means this uh, this FFT algorithm currently has a thousand twenty four um, bins of frequency data in the end. So you can also give it a different order. I think I even initialized it with a different order. In this example, yes, I initialized it with 12. Yeah, and you can choose an... Oh, I deleted the with stuff that I had before. And you can choose a window type. Um, <coughs> a window, yeah, that's... I will talk about that a, a little bit later. Um, basically, we just put the order into the uh, variable and then we calculate a lot of stuff from that that we might use later. Some of these are not used anymore, but I will go through that some other point. And then the actual FIFO is initialized with a size and another <coughs> vector is initialized with a double size and an index value and um, this is the FFT object from Juice and the window type, the sample rate, of course we don't know the sample rate at this point yet, and some other variable. <coughs> you also see the variables down here. If you want to see the data type then pause the video here and check this out. So, um, But we will go through that later anyway. So we have the set sample rate class which gets the sample rate and then calculates for the sample rate the m sample rate size max diff which is m sample rate times m size max diff and size max diff is my name convention for saying that something is the size of the vector minus one that's what the max is standing for and when it says oh i i actually sh changed this name convention already i just realized that diff is not the word that i use for that anymore it's inv for inverted because it's actually 1 divided by um, this <coughs> and I want to be true to my naming conventions so sorry for the delay now but this is really important to me so I can always read my own code um, okay cool now we have m sample rate size max diff and we can do stuff with it later now push samples into FIFO is a method from the co um, from the juice tutorial, but in order to make make this a class and not just write it into process plugin processor directly, I th I felt like I had to transfer the arrays to vectors because in the tutorial these are arrays, but I made vectors from them also. So maybe I want to change the the size of the FFT algorithm uh, at runtime then it would be very useful to just change this and yeah I don't even know if that's possible yet but I just made them vectors because they're easier they easier to deal with and since I'm not so exper experienced yet I didn't want to deal with arrays because they're annoying so yeah we pushed every th sample into the FIFO and when we look at the 
uh, process block then we find this method being called somewhere here yes we put the sample in here and you might ask yourself what's the stuff before that that's basically initializing a new sample value for each sample in the sample buffer and then for each channel add the channel data to the sample and then sample divided to channel in inf I know this shouldn't be in process block because we could uh, calculate that once and then never again but I didn't optimize this code yet as you can see also this makes it more readable for you now which is cool and then uh, we put the sample that has both channel data in it to the um, FFT analyzer so basically we get the merged channel data into this and then we process the oscillator that I will talk about later and then put the oscillator data with the square wave uh, and replace the channel data with that so you now you already know how the plug, uh, process block works just by the way so let's get back to the actual FFT and that means that if the FIFO index which walks up for each it each call of this so for each sample um, if it's the size then we return it to zero so it can go on in the next call and before we do that we do some other stuff uh, which is um, we call a bunch of methods that I saw the first time in my life so I wrote behind them what they mean std fill op seems to be a method that clears a bunch of stuff and we give it uh, we give it the FFT data uh, vector and the beginning of it and the ending of it and but it's not it's not that easy we want we don't want to clear everything because we will put stuff into it in the next call anyway we only want to clear from the half of the vector to the end so that's another method here the std next gets an iterator from some uh, point and then there is kind of the offset in the second argument so now we have the iterator here and pass it here for half the size and then end size and here's the value that we want to put into that for each of these places which is zero so clear no? and then we co copy the FIFO to the FFT data which makes sense because for each sample we put stuff into the FIFO vector and then when the when the FFT data vector is complete we perform the FFT transformation with it now if you did the juice tutorial then this line is probably in another function uh, it is in the function it has a different name uh, in my class but um, it's in the function that draws the spectrogram the new image for the spectrogram and you would find it between these two lines but when I did that I had the problem that it created a lot of audio glitches on my fundamental frequency um, getter and I found out that it's probably because um, it's put it calculates the FFT data too often it tries to calculate FFT data from a vector that already has the FFT data in it and that creates just very weird behavior I believe it's a mistake in their tutorial because it has literally no uh, effort uh, I mean it it, ma it, gi it gives you no benefit to have it at that place the visuals look a little bit worse and also the sound is, is worth worse so every so either I did something wrong or, or they did something wrong but something really wasn't right there um, I, when I said I did something wrong I mean maybe I did something wrong at copying the stuff from the tutor tutorial maybe uh, I forgot something I, I don't know um, however when I uh, put this line here instead it uh, instantly worked very well because now it only performs the FFT data when the um, index reached the size which uh, sounds reasonable to me 
um, then the size uh, the index is being put uh, to zero again so it can start off at the beginning again now what are we doing to fill the FFT data um, with information that can be sent into the for, uh, forward uh, FFT you might ask yourself and that's handled by the following code oh this is the same thing from earlier hey why did why did it jump down there okay I seem to have used it uh, more times here I see the same mistake here by the way or oh, let me quickly change that it's annoying to see that now it's probably somewhere else too yes why did I make this mistake even here well 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 I will do that some other time now it's getting too annoying to me sorry to waste your time with that I just have to keep that in mind um, so we initialize a new variable called window amp and then we want to um, select a window type and perform the window operation on that variable and then use that in combination with just the sample that has been passed by th to the function so let's uh, first of all let's uh, pretend like there is no window which is by the by the way the same as uh, no windowing which just means one so no change uh, that would mean that we would just put the sample into it um, just like that and do nothing else and the problem with that is um, how can I explain that without visuals um, FFT always looks at a bunch of data as you know a vector can only have some size and maybe the signal ends at a different phase than it would start again and that would create a so-called discontinuity which um, makes it pretend like the wave that is currently being played is a different frequency than it actually is and that blurs the image and also the calculation in general so we use some window uh, to kind of uh, round that off and therefore we introduce um, fade ins and fade outs at the sides and I uh, made two window types that we can use here the very simple linear type just looks at if we are at um, less than the half of the index and if yes then we scale the index in a way that it goes up and if we are over the half we scale it that it goes down and that's what the second line does and the sign type looks even easier to understand it just takes the index um, calc multipli multiplicates it with this variable that is um, part of the size max inf p so this is size max inf times p basically and that way we get a window that is based on a sine wave um, by the way the order is um, at the moment has this size that's what you heard earlier an, an FFT analyzer with a size of 4096 bins but I came here to do this something different just nice side information so what we get now actually is um, we see between 0 and 1 that uh, th the signal is at 1 um, for the half of um, this range and that's exactly how our windowing works in sign mode it just multiplicates the signal by this curve for, th for this is the uh, length of the vector this is um, max minus 1 and this is 0 so now uh, you understand why my formula works like that um, yeah so we use this window to get a more accurate um, representation of every frequency so to say 
So now how do we get the fundamental frequency? In order to get the fundamental frequency of a signal we want to get that index where the magnitude that has been calculated by the FFT is the highest. So I made a little for loop here that goes from 0 to the half the size of the vector because um, for some reason uh, that I don't know yet the actual magnitude values are only um, oh yeah I actually know why but first of all the actual magnitude values uh, are being put in the first half of the vector and the second half has the phase values but I didn't deal with them yet so I can't tell you anything about them I have no not a big idea about what that actually means yet sorry about that so um, yeah we get the index where max is the where, the where ABS of the current sample is the highest we use the absolute values by the way let me use the standard library for that we, we get the maximum values out of this um, by using the rectified samples because otherwise it would not go up if a uh, wave had the amplitude minus one or anything you know and minus one is a loud wave if it always goes between minus one and one that means it's loud so it does have to go uh, up if it sees a negative number and not stay where it is right so we let this value go higher and get the max maximum value and its index and we multiply this index with the sample rate times size max inf man why did I do this mistake so much was this is, wasn't it yes yeah, I only used this variable at that specific point and I think I calculated here yes now you now you see how things come into place here so um, why I use all these variables why for uh, especially why I calculated here so I don't have to use it uh, do it ever again but now we see a little downside of doing this because this actually needs the size to be known uh, before the sample rate is passed and that works at the moment because I pass the order here which makes the size but if I made a function that lets me choose choose a different size later by choosing a different order then this function would have to call set sample rate very interesting relationship here however let's go on now that we have the fundamental frequency we can ask ourselves where is it even passed? Now we go back to the, not to the editor, but to the plugin processor. And go down to the process block, and we see there is an oscillator in here, and we say set frequency, and there we get the fundamental frequency into it. And later we will use the oscillator to process, uh, and we pass the sample value from the from where we calculated the mid channel of everything and we pass that so we also have a mono sample in here and uh, we will very soon see uh, what we use that for and then in the end we get the square wave from the oscillator so now get back and let's see what the oscillator does now it's an HDL FFT oscillator, a specific oscillator class that I wrote specifically for this application. And it has two structs in it, an oscillator and an envelope follower. And that's now you see where we pass the uh and the amplitude data from the from from the process blocks sample stuff because we will use that for the envelope follower later and we have an enumerator uh, uh, waveforms for the different waveforms that can be accessed later we have a constructor that doesn't do anything fancy 
it gets a filter. Do I even still use the filter in the calculation? No, I think I could get rid of it, but I'm not sure yet. Um, because, you know, I, I tried different stuff to kind of get, get things a little bit cleaner, or maybe it was in this method. No? Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure where I even used it or if I used it, if I still use it. However, this is important, the frequency range, range where you can set a minimum frequency and the maximum frequency. Because I found that even if you kind of, um, let's say you don't have a minimum and maximum frequency, then if you stop talking, it could happen that it, it depletes the background noise as very high or very low waves and that got very annoying uh, fortunately these waves were really really low and really really high so you can set these values at very high points where it doesn't matter anyway anymore because no one has a fundamental frequency of 19,000 hertz and most humans don't go much below 80 as well so th this is a nice range for doing that and yeah we will use that later and we set the filter that is currently not used maybe I will introduce that later as well uh, again and the sample rate is being passed to the oscillator and the envelope before being transferred to float because float is enough for a sample rate in my opinion so set frequency what are we doing here that's really interesting we say if the frequency is higher than the uh, end of the range and lower than the start not which means if it's out of range if the frequency is out of range then the f the current frequency is oh yeah i really used the filter No, wait, this means if it's out of range and the not makes it if it's in range. Sorry, I was just a little bit confused. So basically this asks if everything is in range, then move the frequency on. And I can make this a little bit easier, I just saw. Now, get to the next frequency, but only by the amount of M filter. Yeah, that's what I used the filter for. <coughs> yeah, sorry for, for that I thought I didn't use that anymore, but I actually do. So let's pretend the filter is 1. That would mean that we just immediately go to the new frequency. And if this is 0, then we would never change the frequency. We would always stay on M frequency, so it would stay on 0. So we can use this to decide the retune speed of the oscillator, basically. Yeah, that would be a best better word for it. Maybe I will change that later. But filter uh, tells you more accurately what it does, because it actually filters. It's kind of like a low-pass filter on the frequency line or wave or something. However, then we set the frequency in both things. Why do we have to set the frequency in the envelope follower, you might ask? We will go to that very soon. Then the process method is co being called for every sample and it passes the sample to the envelope to get the envelope from the envelope follower. So just by passing the current sample, we get a new envelope uh, data. And the oscillator also does its thing. And then we can get any kind of wave. What's the problem about this? Waveforms is unscoped. Prefer enum class over enum. Really? I should use enum class. Th then why did it work? And why does this not work? I already hate it. Let's just keep things the way they are as long as it works. <coughs> so yeah, here we have the different cases, whatever is being uh, transmitted here. And then we, we just return that. 
uh, uh, together multiplied with the envelope. And this is used so, so the waves are not continuous forever, so that they are kind of louder and uh, quieter depending on how loud the input signal actually is. But not we don't take the input signal just the way it is because otherwise it would create its own waveform uh, obviously because it's a wave. So we kind of have to flatten it in a way that it will still every so lets everything sound like the way it actually is but with the uh, right volume. And uh, you heard it, it works very well and I will show you why it works so well very soon. And I'm very proud of my solution there because it's a very neat one in this this time. But first of all, let's go to the oscillator. The oscillator is really simple. It's just an oscillator with uh, only three variables. When you set the sample rate, it calculates uh, m sample rate 2 inf, so it's 2 divided by sample rate. And when you set the frequency, it calculates m uh, sample rate 2, uh, I mean m inc by frequency times m sample rate 2 inf. And then in process, it just goes on with the index, and if the index reaches 1, it it uh, sends the index back two by two. So really simple oscillator stuff and then we get the sine wave, get the saw wave or get the square wave by doing these very simple calculations here. I will also add some other waves later but I thought first of all let's just add the simplest waves of all time. <coughs> Yes, I know I didn't make this a wavetable. I know it would be a little bit better to use a wavetable here, but I wanted to keep things very simple while experimenting with the FFT uh, algorithm. I didn't want to spend too much time on the details of everything else yet. <coughs> now the envelope follower is a little bit special though. It has an attack and a release value with a default so uh, you don't have to use um, attack, set attack and set release from anywhere else if you don't really want to. But if you want to, uh, all it does is gets the parameter that you send in and says 1 minus the parameter and the parameter can be anything between 0 and 1. So it's a really easy to use function. Then when we set the sample rate it just puts the sample rate here, this time without any fancy stuff because in uh, set frequency we calculate the cycle, the length of the cycle by saying m sample rate divided by the frequency because as you can see there is an index uh, and this time we want to use this index to go on like a normal index even though it's float, it's it will always go on by one um, but m cycle can actually be a float value, so I decided to make the index float as well because we, we will um, compare them with each other later. Now the get envelope is a little bit more complex. First of all, we take the sample that goes in, and this time we don't pass it by const reference because we want to actually transform it to an absolute value, and that's easier to just make a copy of it anyway then. And also we ask, should uh, the signal be saturated? But that's o only a little feature. Now let's get to the important stuff. Now we have the absolute um, signal. Just by the sa standard library has absolute values. Then we ask, if the envelope, this is the important variable by the way, this is the thing that is being sent back at the end. So, if the envelope is still smaller than the sample, it's quieter than the sample, then we add the sample to it by the amount of attack. And now you see why attack is a variable between uh, 0 and 1, because that way we can easily just say, yeah, for low attack values we want it to be really fast like in a compressor and for high attack values we want it to be really slow. That's why I did one minus attack and not just attack. And also 
the index is being reset to zero because you will see what we use the index for very soon. Now let's pretend m envelope is actually higher than sample. So we go into the else block and in the else blo block we, we care about if m index is still smaller than the cycle. Then we count it up. Actually I use too much space here. This is not necessary. <coughs> now let's pretend m index has reached m cycle and therefore we know that enough samples have passed that one wavelength has been finished. So that would mean for if this is the wave that's cur currently running then we are at this point and uh, in this whole time m envelope has not changed. So, th so that means that the waveform is not altered by the envelope. And that's the reason why it works so well. Now we have reached the end of some of the wave cycle and we still ask ours and we see that we are still um, over sample then that would mean that we can um, that we can just go into release mode now and for that um, we do the same then with the attack so now we would slowly start to release the um, the wave, but we also send the index back to M cycle. So we basically just land in this situation again. So this is being called uh, only very rarely. So you'd have to uh, use the release parameter a little bit different than the attack parameter to, to get similar results. But as you can see, putting both on 0.7 works pretty fine as you have heard in the audio example. Now then the envelope is just returned, but I found that if it's just returned like that, it can happen on some signals that it won't really re um, react nice on the lower uh, amplitudes it might just eat the lower amplitudes with silence so I decided to give the option to say saturated yes and then it's put into a 10H wave shaper before being sent back so it has a little bit more strength if needed yeah that's how the envelope follower works and that's the reason why it works so well together with the oscillator when it's being um, sent back with a frequency. Uh, with the right waveform, I mean. Yeah, in prepare to play, of course, we set the sample rate. Well, that's basically all there is to it and yeah it's pretty easy in process block I already showed you what it does and I like about my implementation at the moment that it's finally really easy to get the fundamental frequency of stuff and do fancy stuff with that and I don't like that some of the stuff is still not optimized but all in all I'm really a little bit shocked by how easy this all was. Of course big thanks to the people from the Discord for helping me about the fundamental frequency problem where I had some um, problems at the beginning because I didn't know how to actually access the FFT vector in the right way but once I knew it everything was just so easy suddenly that I, that I can't believe it almost. It's kind of magic, this FFT algorithm. I love it. And I'm very excited about the things that I will be able to do with that in the future. And with my FFT oscillator. See you.